Hello everybody, the public beta of Bitwig 5 is finally out and it brings so much cool new stuff which might not look that impressive on a first look but if you go into the details it's so much things people have been asking for. So let's walk you through. And the main thing everybody's asked about is MSEC, so multi-stage envelope generators. And you might wonder why this took so long, because it's like the Bitwig way. It's not a simple MSEC, it's lots of MSECs. It's actually five different devices, which we'll have a look at in a second. Then there is a very useful feature. You get now remote controls on a track and on the project, which is a very powerful feature, which means you can collect your most important parameters to control on your controller, for example, on the project level. So you can create one pages where you can control, for example, a volume of a track, a filter cutoff, and these things in one place. Very nice thing, which we'll also have a look in a second. Then you can also now modulate things in the mixer. So you get modulators on the mixer level. No more need to use a specific tool device for that. You get a totally revamped browser, which is much more powerful and very interesting to look at. And then we get new features in the clip launcher, which is very impressive. You can now choose lots of different ways how the clip launcher should behave. And I know as a developer of Driven by Moss and supporting many controllers, these are the things people ask about all the time to have this. And this is a really powerful feature, especially in a live context. And then you get lots of smaller details which adds up and brings also lots of benefits to the version 5. But let's dive in. Let's start with MSEC. So what is that thing? It's not a simple multi-stage envelope. It's actually lots of them. And if we look here at the grid, so I created here a polygrid instance and you get five different modules of MSEC. You get a full-blown sequencer called slopes. Then you get also an oscillator, which is also a multi-stage envelope. And you get, okay, the simplest thing, the envelope itself, it's called segments. Then you got also an effect, which is called transfer, which is a wave shaper. And you also get an LFO, which is called curves. And all these things share the same capabilities for the envelopes. And you can also exchange the different envelopes between them. So if, for example, open up, you see here the editor, you can change here in the size. You have different tools, so you can draw in here. You can change here the, the look of the envelope. You get helper tools, for example, to create things like that. And you can change if it's bipolar or not, or if it's only in one direction. And you can finally also save this here as a new curve for further use also in the other items. And you can also access here the browser. So on these devices, you will always find here this folder icon and with that you can then open up here the browser which gives you also a little impression already of the new browser layout and look and feel which we will dive in later and there you see you can select all these different reconfigured waveforms but you can also store your own so for example let's have a, a listen to that so you can create crazy sounds also especially interesting i think is the oscillator to use an oscillator which you can freely draw now so let's also open here the browser to listen to that what, what insane sounds you can, can come up with So very interesting stuff and you can get really crazy with that. And if you are a sound designer, I guess you will love it. And yeah, the envelope is a running through envelope in contrast here to the LFO where you can have an LFO. So it runs here always in this in circles and you also see here that you always a nice animation where the position is and what is going on and here in contrast the other one here in curves you can also have lots of curves so you can change here also the curve with the editor so pretty power, powerful stuff you can also change here snap and also change the grid yeah many many possibilities 
These are the five new devices you can use in a grid, but you cannot only use it in a grid. You can use it also in the polymer synthesizer device. And there you get also the oscillator. So here you can now also select the scroll oscillator. And there you get the same features as I showed you just in the grid. And here you also have the option to load the different sounds here on the polymer. And also you get here the segments, also the envelope can be set now to segments. And here you have also the possibility to choose from these different segments. So you can finally do stuff like that. But you can change this to your hearts alike as well. And last but not least, these things are also available now as a modulator source. So if we look here at the polysynth, open up the modulators and I inserted here a segments and also curves. So the LFO and the envelope are available as well. And for example, here I modulate the volume of the oscillator one and two and the noise one. And here with the LFO, I modulate here the filter and resonance. Let's also give this a listen. So you can do pretty crazy stuff with that. So these things are finally here and very powerful and I guess more powerful than you expected. And what you here already also see is now these two things here in the front. So what is that? This is now the possibility to have remote controls on a per track basis. So this is the first block you see here, which I could rename, for example, uh, track remotes. So then it's more clear that this is not a device. So you have the devices here and you have now here the track controls. And you can also on a per track level, you could insert modulators here and you can create remotes which are on a track level. Let's have a look. So for example, I could pick anything I like. Let's have here the, the curve changes. For example, I could pick here, why not the noise level? I could pick here the feedback from the delay. So everything is possible here. And the same is possible also on a per project level. So if I open up here that, create a page, I can now also say, okay, for that track, I want also to have the feedback level, but then I also want to go here to my polymer and on the polymer, uh, you see here, it's the same page now. And for the second parameter for the polymer, I want to control the output level of the polymer. So this is available from everywhere and you can create now some pages. You can also create multiple pages for that. And you have the most important controls in one place, which then can also be controlled from your hardware controller. You will also find this item here in the side pane. So if we go here, you can also find it below, which is then accessible all the time from the side pane. And this is also now the possibility to use modulation on the mixer. For example, we can create a modulator as well. Let's pick here anything. Yeah, why not the new? Curves LFO, let's go with that one. And let's say you want to, for example, modulate the volume of the master track, for example. So then you can say, I want to modulate. Oh, let's go with the delay volume. So you can change the delay volume of the delay. And sure, you can also change the other parameters, for example. Let's also pick, what else do we have? Let's pick another LFO. And you can also here then flip around to the panorama and say okay let's also modify the panorama so you do not need any more a tool device for that you can directly do it now from this place next big thing is the browser so let's go here on an empty track let's also close that down and if you open that you see the browser looks a bit different now it's basically the same functions are there but you don't have this overwhelming number of multiple columns you mainly see your search results you can also enlarge that and then you see the different possibilities to filter your item 
and you get also some quick access for filters, pre-configured, more complex filtering on the left. And the topmost one is to show you everything. So you get everything that's available in Bitwig as a source. You see your devices, plugins, Bitwig presets, and so on. And then you can start to filter to your hearts alike. For example, you can say, I want to see only plugins which are from UE, for example. Yeah, why not stop with that? <laughs> now it's interesting that you get also some help that you can say this is a vendor. So you want to set UE as a vendor because it was found here. So there's also some additional intelligence in there. And what you can now do is very interesting. You can say either you want to save it as a snapshot or to save it as a smart collection. What's the difference here? If you say you store it as a snapshot, it will be then always exactly these devices. And if you save it as a smart collection, it will do the search, so the filtering. So if you, for example, installed a new UE device, it will then show up if you do smart collection. And if not, it will do a snapshot. This is especially helpful if you collected some things and want to focus especially always on those and not have it messed up with new installations or things, then it's helpful to do that. So let's go with the smart collection. Let's say these are the UE devices. You can also pick a cover for that and say, save it. It also added now this new search to this quick bar and you can then click on it. Let's click on something else. So here you get all instruments. And if I click then you return to your previous search. So you can have here your most used searches. It's a little bit similar to what you had before in the collections column also in the browser. But there are more features in here as well. Not only do you have this new filtering approach, which is a little bit less cluttered, you have also this new icon here on the top. And if you click here, you will not only see your own created collections where you can say if you want to have it here in the quick sources or not in the quick sources. For example, you could remove that here from the quick sources and then here is the option to add it again to the quick sources. And you can also rearrange that here quick sources to your hearts alike. You could also remove, for example, you never looking for MIDI clips, then you could get rid of that. What is that? My library, maybe let's also remove that. And then I have only the things I'd like to focus on. But there is more stuff here. There are also packages. So the packages were before only available via the library installation and now you can also use them to filter it easier so you can say what are Bitwig packages and so on and then can also directly go into that package and only focus on that package here in the browser. There is still UHE so let's get rid of that and then you can also use it for example if you have a new library and then you want to listen to those presets and then you can focus on that. So we already saw the collections you can also filter by different kind so you could also more visual approach to finding your drums for examples or basses these things and you finally also have still your locations and you can add more locations content music and plugin to that as well and remember you can pin all these different things to your quick sources so also packages if you prefer such a package you can also add that to the quick sources bar pretty nice additions here to the pop-up browser and the same features are in the pane so you could also hear this new look and feel of the filters and you can also access here your quick bar quick source items from the top which makes this more cleaner i think than the old approach with those different frames and yeah it's easier to find your stuff with these things moving on to the clip launcher i always get the question oh can we have something else if i press it uh, i want to have it stop i want to make it coffee okay not that but you get the different ideas what the play clip or when you press a pad on your controller should do and you can now directly configure that in Bitwig. And this is a really cool feature. And you can do that for every clip differently. So if you look here at this clip, you get now these options. The launch quantization is like before. But what is new here is this 
additional column, which is the alternate column. And this makes sense if you program that from a controller. For example, you use a shift key on your controller as the indicator for the alternate function. And there you could, for example, say here with the launch quantization, if I press it normally, it should launch quantize. And if I use the shift button, I want to not have it quantized, for example. And this makes even more sense here with the play mode. So you have now these different options to trigger normal playback. You can also do this legato thing that it starts in the middle of the clip also with different options. And the alternate mode has exactly the same option. So you could also have, if you press it in a normal way, you will directly start your clip playback and in an alternate version, you want to have it in the legato way. And you can also say, what do you want to have on release? And this is one I got asked a lot of time. I want to have the clip to continue. I want to have it to stop. I want to have it to return to the previous clip. So you can jump between clips with that option or trigger the next action, which was already there before. So this is quite powerful. And if you have a regular way how you want to use it, you can also configure that here in the settings and set your default configuration, which you want to have it to function that way all the time when you create a new clip. And just being here in the side pane, we have now a nice speaker icon. So this one got also decluttered. Before that, it contained also the controller settings for the project, which did not make any sense at all to have it here. And this got now moved here in this top bar. So if you click here now, you get the different settings for your controller. Currently, it's a little bit hard to distinguish them, but I already commented on that and I think we will get some colors or icons to that. So this will be easier to find your controller up there. And there you have now the project specific settings. You have also additional head over display where you see what's happening on the controller. And you can also have this different configuration that the scrolling follows the controller, for example. So this was a quite long video and this was just a little bit scratching on the surface. As, as I said, more and more details in that. So you need also to read the fine print of the release. And I guess it takes a lot of time to dive in all these new features of the new oscillators, uh, segments and MSEC and all that stuff to find out how this really works and what it can do for you. And adding it up, it's very powerful, I think. And I hope you dig it, like it and make some funky music.